Hi Jennifer, how are you doing today? I'm well. Alright, thanks for coming in. I'm excited to work with you. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of our first session just to go through a quick assessment, just to see where you are and where we're going to be able to take you. It's going to be straightforward. If you don't feel comfortable with some of the assessments we're going to take you through, let me know. We can always adjust or modify them however we need to. But I think it'll give us an overall great picture as to where you're at physically right now. And from there, we'll be able to design a, the best program we can for you and your goals. So I think we'll start there, start very basic and work our way up if that's all right. Sounds good. Um, I can't believe we're already into February. I know. It's actually crazy. <laughs> nice. Uh, I've got your phone number, perfect, email's all there. Um, you've completed the PAR Q already, just the, the form that we sent out to you? I did, awesome. I emailed great. it back to Yeah, you. that's great, thanks for that. Let me just circle this. And um, your date of birth here? Is September 4th, 1956. Uh, you also signed the waiver already, which is great. And uh, your physician's first name? Erica. Erica, Erica her last name? Frasca, F-R-A-S-C-A. -S okay, and do you have her phone number on you? 967-322-3932. Didn't even need to check your phone, wow, okay, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, <clears throat> any emergency contacts, best person we can reach if, if we need to? Probably my husband. Okay. His name is John. John, nice. Good name. <laughs> like for, for Ferguson? Ferguson. <laughs> yes. And phone number. 416 473 0217. Awesome. All right, so I'm just going to ask you a few questions. You answer them as best as you can. Um, we already kind of know how you came across Vintage. We already had the introductory phone call and things like that. So. Yeah. I just really want to focus on your abilities throughout, throughout our first session together, okay? Mm -hmm. um, any relevant medical conditions that I need to know about that, that could be aggravated from exercise or anything medically diagnosed from a doctor or anything you think that I should know about? Well, I have no ACL in my left knee and I have torn my MCL in my right knee. I also have a dilated ascending aorta which is managed with medication. Um, do you notice any symptoms from the aorta issue? No, and I do ride my bike. Okay, you're active in a lot of different ways, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is there, how did you learn about that condition? Was the doctor talking about it, and uh, was it just a regular checkup and they noticed it, or um, were there was there an instance where there was a symptom or sign that kind of caused the, the concern? Yeah, we were driving home from holiday one year, and uh, I started to feel really terrible in the car. Okay. And uh, so once we got home, I went to see the doctor, and I explained, you know, the symptoms that I was having. Okay. And so she ordered some tests. Was, what year was that? Uh, 2017. Okay. And no, no issues since then, hopefully? No, I okay. seem to be able to manage it with the medication she's okay. taking. Any other relevant medical history you think I need to know? And as it comes up down the road, you know, feel free to bring it up, but um, anything else you can think of? Not really. Breaks and bones or broke? No, no unfortunately. Okay. Good stuff. Talk about. Um, and we got a lot of this information from you from some of the questionnaires that we sent you earlier, which is great. So, um, and then um, in terms of medication, any, uh, any prescribed medications that you're taking, um, if there are any vitamins or anything like that, just off the top of your head. And usually what's best if, if you have a, um, a printed copy or a, a recorded uh, somewhere on your computer or on your phone of a list of medications, that'd be great too. But if you don't have that with you now, that's no problem. I can jot down some of the main ones. And then later on, if you want to just email me or, or take a photo or bring a copy in, um, okay. that'd be great too. But any, okay. any that you know just off so the top. So the heart medication yeah. that I'm on and uh, levothyroxine, I know for high because I'm hypothyroid, mm. um, and, the, and then I do take a multivitamin, and I take additional vitamin D3. Awesome. Off the 
top of my head, I don't know what the name of our medication is. Okay. I, I think that's okay. No, but is it once a day? Once a day, twice yeah. a day? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so we chatted a little bit about your goals. Let's just go over them a little bit more if we could, just so I get a better idea. If I were to ask you kind of like, what are your top three goals? Uh, what am I here to help you with? You know, how can we work together on, on helping you to achieve the things that we're here to help you achieve? What are some of the top threes you would say? Okay. Um, well, I think I'd like to uh, build up my endurance. Okay. Just overall, overall? Overall endurance and strength. I think those are the two top goals for me. Okay. Um, are you pretty active, um, hiking, skiing, snowboarding, anything like that? Pre-COVID, yes. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, I, I do ski, and I'm a swimmer. Oh, nice. And awesome. I have a stationary bike at home, which I do usually two to three times a week. So you're already pretty active, that's awesome. Um, okay. And then, um, I guess... The way I'm thinking of designing the program with you is to kind of tie in a lot of the performance goals as well too, and that'll really target the endurance and the strength. Um, but hearing you say things like you you like to cycle, um, you swim, you know, let's let's implement exercises that will help you to uh, continue to do that and be a little bit stronger and a little bit better at it too. Um, the Olympics were four years out, so or two years, <laughs> we'll get you there. Um, that's and awesome. Masters Olympics. There, this year, this year. Um, so I'm just gonna take uh, a few vital signs from you. Uh, we're gonna start with the heart rate and blood pressure. You just stay nice and relaxed. Uh, I'm gonna wait one good minute before we actually take the, because I do want a resting. Um, and just so I don't have to do that, what is your age? Uh, 65. <laughs> Yeah, that's great for resting. That's right where we want to be. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. Good, healthy pulse, strong. I can feel it right away. Um, I just did the 10 second count. I prefer doing the manual stuff so I can get a real feel for it. Um, great stuff. So that's a that's a great sign. Usually, resting heart rate, we want it under 100 as much as we can, as close to that. Um, especially, and I get that. Um, and I get that uh, when doing an assessment like this, some people get a little bit anxious or depending on their comfort level. Um, that's why I have you relax for a minute before, okay? Can we do a quick blood pressure on you as well? I, I usually have the opposite problem. My heart rate tends to be low, I think. Yeah. And good. trying to get it up is more of a challenge. Okay, look at it. And it, has that always been the case, or have you noticed that since the uh, real issue? I think that's always been the case. That's a great sweater you have on. Very comfortable too. I have one. On, I have one as well. I couldn't find it. <laughs> awesome. Can you just relax your arm for me. <clears throat> and so they have manual and automatic blood pressure cuffs too. Uh, for me personally, I, I feel more comfortable doing the uh, manual. It just keeps me on my toes in terms of uh, my practice. And I like listening to the sounds of the body moment too. So. <laughs> and just relax your arm there for me.
Raise blood pressure. It's about 110 over 70. So we're right where we need it to be. So blood pressure is always a great marker. The top number is the pressure at which the blood leaves the heart. And the bottom number is the pressure at which the heart, the blood enters the heart. So you want to think about, you don't want the bottom number to be too high because you don't want there to be too much pressure limiting the amount of filling into the heart. Okay. Great. Let me go ahead and get my scale. I'll be right back and we're going to do a height and weight with you. Roughly how tall would you say you are? Uh, five to eight and shrinking. Five inch. <laughs> awesome. Give me one moment. I'll okay. Now, one question I should ask you. Do you feel comfortable knowing your body weight? Absolutely. Yeah? You'd yeah. like to know? Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Awesome. I would I'm love... Curious, actually. Okay, yeah. wicked. I would love for you to remove your shoes for right. me. Say the couple ounces. go through all the, the results with you at the end okay. um, just so we can kind of uh, flow a little bit better but um, good healthy weight I mean uh, especially you can have a seat here uh, keep them off actually okay. that'd be great um, with age we there's that fine line because we don't want to be too underweight or too overweight this fine line between having um, a little bit of extra padding and cushion for uh, overall longevity and, and uh, decreasing the risk of frailty but also if you think of um, some of the high risk factors with age, things like falls and things like that, having a bigger body composition, but not too high, is a little bit uh, more beneficial um, in the longer run too. So I'm uh, just gonna stick to the body composition. I'm gonna do a few measurements on you as well. Okay. I am gonna have you, I'm just gonna move my chair. And Jennifer, I'll have you stand right here for me. And facing straight ahead, measurements for your body composition. Okay, we're going to start with the chest. I'd love for you to have your arms right out to the side. Let's see my trusty two little here. Right. And just relax your arms by your side for me. Perfect. If you could point out your belly button for me, she would pull perfect right there. And I'll have you place your hands right on your shoulders. Take a couple inches off for the shirt. Take a deep breath in and exhale and relax. And so once again, just hands on the shoulders. I'm just going to do a uh, thigh measurement, actually. I'm going to have this for over here. Okay. I would love for you to just place your left leg right up top here. I'm going to do a thigh measurement here as well. Okay. And so we palpate for the middle. I'm going to go just the front of the patella here. Just the ASI is the top of the hip. I'm going to smack that in the middle. It's a good marker for that. Okay. 
Same right there, I'm gonna do a calf on you as well. And I usually look for the medius part of the calf. Same thing with the right. Good stuff. Okay. And you have great balance, I can tell already, but if you needed an extra hand, we can always kind of go up against the wall, okay. or if you had a stair or a countertop close by, just to help keep your balance, we can always get you closer to that. So the things that I'm looking for are body segments, body alignment to see if you know a certain shoulder is hiked up a little bit, maybe your hips may be a little bit further back, or how your body kind of stacks on the joints of the body. So okay. how the knee stacks over top of the ankle bone, how the hip stacks over top of the knee. So that's why I kind of look from the side, the front, uh, and the back as well, just to see if there's any, any things that I notice. Good to know. Some of the few things that I'm noticing right off the top is uh, just from standing from the side view, you can tell that your hips are a little bit shifted forward from just over top of your ankles. Hmm. Um, that's telling me a few things, weaker core, maybe tighter hamstrings, or and from other tests that we're gonna do, we're gonna kind of put those pieces together. That's why I like doing a body scan at the beginning so we get to see kind of, okay, here's some things that I noticed, now let's get you moving to see if um, what we saw here from you standing <coughs> without moving, will that be the same? Now, from the top view, so that's the biggest thing I saw. Uh, not the worst around the shoulders, actually. Yeah, pretty good posture, a little bit forward head tilt, uh, but not nothing worth um, mentioning too drastic or anything. But the biggest thing that I'm noticing is just your, your hips are a little bit forward uh, compared to your, your ankles, okay? Um, do you find that your, your body weight is shifted over top of your foot? Or do you find like your body weight is transferred kind of to the front or towards the heels? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's why we're here. You're doing great. Yeah. Um, stay as you are. The other thing I noticed too is just from looking at you at the back, um, it looks like this shoulder's a little bit higher than the left. The right shoulder's a little bit higher than the left, which then leads into at the hip as well. Um, hip's pretty pretty well aligned. I'm just gonna do a quick palpation if I can. Hands on the shoulders. Okay. Hands on, on your shoulders. Oh, my okay. hands. Okay. <laughs> I'm just palpating to see if one uh, hip hikes up over to one side or the other. Not that bad, you can relax your arms over there. This one, my left hip was giving me grief yesterday. Oh yeah. It was. But today it seems fine. And I guess I didn't mention I have broken the bone in my right Okay. <laughs> well, you know, you know it's funny, you can tell that this side is a little more tonic compared to this, because I'm going to exaggerate it, but you're you kind of here. Yeah. So when you get into this position here, these, this side here kind of tightens up a little bit. Uh -huh. You may find a little tightness in your right side of your neck a little bit more compared to your left. 
Um, but again, the like, God is just where we're at and what can we do about it? Um, and it's great that you don't really know us too much at all. It does look like your feet kind of uh, pronate a little bit. Um, as, as, yes. uh, has somebody ever said that you have flat arches or anything like that? I do have flat yeah. yeah. Just from looking at you, you can see that um, your feet kind of cave in a little bit, which leads to a bit of a bow, bow legged kind of situation, too. Um, and that's not uncommon for a lot of people, right? Depending on lifestyle, depending on what other the things that we do throughout our daily lives. But um, and then looking at you here. Yeah, and, and keep doing them. Uh, they're a great tool, um, but for me personally, uh, I, I like the idea of barefoot workouts depending on the space we're in, right? Yeah. If we're in a comfortable space, I like the idea of getting the sensory input from the foot to the brain, and sometimes depending on the shoes, that limits that, right? So um, orthotics are great for daily life. Throughout your day, it's fantastic. Constantly use them, um, but we just don't want to become too dependent on them. That's, I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. Okay. Um, so we're going to do things like single leg and focusing on the arch underneath the foot to help build up the overall strength of, of your feet. Um, all the things I'm saying to you, please don't get discouraged by it. I'm here for that reason to say, hey, look, this is what I noticed. Um, let's, let's, uh, let's do something about it. That's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. um, that's great. Uh, now we're going to start moving a little bit. We're going to get into some range of motion. You can stay just as you are. And I'm going to stand right over here and just relax your arms by your side. I'm going to start at the neck. What I'd love for you to do is I'd love for you to turn as far as you can to the left. Look all the way to the left. Oh, great range of motion. That's awesome. And all the way to the right. Okay, awesome. And now I'd love for you to tilt your head over to one side. Good. A little bit more restricted, but that's, that's okay. Then back over to the other side. Cool. Uh, I'd love for you to look all the way down, tuck your chin to your chest. And I'm just looking for general range of motion. We're going to look up to the ceiling, looking up as hard as you can. Any pain in the back of the neck? No? no? Okay, great. Now, what I could normally do is have this thing called the goniometer, and that actually would be specifically measuring the angle at which you're able to move out of joint. Um, for me personally, I like more visual, and I'll make a note to see which sides are tight. And um, what I noticed is kind of what we were talking about, well, one part of the neck is a little bit tighter, maybe it's from the shoulder. Now, now here, we are, we're going to be looking at the shoulders. I'd love for you to have your arms nice and straight. We're going to bring our arms out to the side, bringing them up towards the ears as high as we can. Arms all the way up. And I'll demonstrate this first. Yeah, great range of motion. Okay, that's awesome. We're going to go arms straight, palms in this time. A little bit more flexion. I'd love for you to bring your arms straight up. Great, and we're going to do that one more time. I'm going to look at you from the side just to see if as you bring your arms up, your body compensates in some way. Maybe the lower back might arch a little bit. Maybe your ribs might flare open, but um, that looks great. And one more, actually, I'm going to look at you from the back just to see if there's any elevation in the shoulders here. And one more. Okay, there you go. It looks like you have really good scapular mobility, which is great too. So when you bring the arms up, I want to see if, if your shoulder blades kind of rotate upward a little bit. Um, so that's fantastic. <clears throat> and now from here, I'm going to have you bend your elbows for me. I'd love for you to just separate these wrists. It looks like you're limited a little bit on the other side, right? Maybe it's that injury from before, but that's great. And back in. A few more times. Try to keep the elbows tight to the torso. Yeah. So a little bit limited, but you know what? That's common nature of our life, lives usually. Um, we drive, we sit, we eat. We're always kind of in this internally rotated position, right? So um, that's that's a big factor. I'm gonna do one more just to see how we look in two different movements. I'd love for you to kind of be out to the side here, more of an adductor position. Okay. And we're gonna rotate externally, try to make a W. Okay. And that just ties in, like we know you have really good adductors, adductor ability. Uh, but again, if the internal rotator is out of the rear, we'll on this uh, right side. Okay, good stuff. Torso rotation. Took uh, six months of rehab to get it where it is. Yeah. Um, and you know, let's, let's keep adding that. Right now, it's like the rehab part is all done. Let's do some of the strengthening, the functional stuff that will yeah. help to, number one, maintain it and improve it as best we can. Great. Uh, 
torso rotation. Alright, you know what, for this one, let's do it seated. Uh, let me put this over here for a second. I'm just going to demonstrate this first, and then I'll have you do it for the right okay. after. As comfortable as you can be. We're going to sit up nice and tall. Hands on the shoulders. I always like to instruct people to take a deep breath in. And then exhale as we rotate to one side. Your head is going to move with your hip and your torso. So I don't want you rotating as you're looking forward. Let that whole body move together. And then just get a better idea. If one side is going to be tighter than the other. And again, if, if we wanted to be really specific, we could get the, the going younger and measure the degree of uh, flexion there so, as well. But uh, grab seats. Taking a deep breath in, and exhale. There you go. Over to the right, yep. Great rotation, let's do one more side here. Yeah. If you have range of motion, it doesn't look like you're restricted in it, you can relax your arms. It doesn't look like you're restricted in any way, or um, it looks like you're moving through any pain when you do that. No. no. And I'll ask about pain because pain is a pretty good indicator of uh, certain things. If you feel like something's getting pinched or whatnot, but you don't want to nip that in the butt. Uh, now, uh, since you are seated, um, we're going to look at the knees pretty quickly and then we'll do some standing. Uh, what I would love for you to do is just straighten out your left leg for me. Sitting nice and tall. Uh, now, actually, sit all the way back in the chair, bend the knees. Now what I'd love for you to do is uh, getting your foot off the ground. Oh. I'd love for you to just straighten that leg straight out. I don't want to see how much flexion you get. So I'm going to see a position that's great. Awesome. No pain in the knee? No. Let's do the same with the right. Okay. Awesome. Uh, now I'm actually going to have you stand up for me. We can use the chair for some balance and support. And this is going to be right here. Okay. Um, now what I would love for you to do is we're going to do a knee flexion. So just keeping your hand or two on the chair, I'd love for you to just keep your hips forward, but pull your left heel back. Pull your left heel back. Grab it. All right, let's see the other side here. A little more on the right. Any cramping on that side? No. No, okay. <laughs> Not a lot. So again, that's helpful. something. And usually the funny thing with cramping is like, that could be side of dehydration or lack of endurance and strength, right? We always think it's a tight muscle, but sometimes it's not necessarily that. It could be a number of things. Um, I'd like to look at the hip now as well. Um, now, just from where you're standing, I'd love for you to go into an extension. Uh, keeping the tension in the tummy, I'd love for you to just pull that left heel back as far as you can without arching that lower back. Pull it back as far as you can. Good. And back down, but do me a favor, keep that knee nice and straight for me. So now, by keeping the knee straight, we're focusing solely at the top of the hip there. Uh, awesome, and back down. Let's do the same with the right. So your body just naturally shifts a little bit to the uh, to the right as you do that. There you go, see if that's good. Great, I'll stop you there. Now, Then nice and tall, once again, using the chair for a little bit of balance. I'd love for you to just bring that left knee forward and up as high as you comfortably can. Great. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. And again, if uh, if you felt like you're, you didn't feel as confident doing these standing, you can definitely do them seated. Um, and um, it would be essentially having you do it seated and just pulling your knee to the chest. The leg extension would be a little bit challenging. Um, that's why, again, we're doing it standing and holding onto a chair. So that's great. I'm just going to look at the ankle. Grab a seat. Now, what I would love for you to do is we are just going to lift that left foot off the ground and just keep that leg relaxed for I'd love for you to point your toe up as high as you can. So that's a great indicator of mobility. So we, we want to have good uh, dorsiflexion. So the ability to lift our toes up. So when we're thinking about walking, we always want that ability to lift the foot off so that we can clear our step or clear our carpet. 
and so on. And then I put up there just to be off. We're going to push down, push down. Yep, good range of motion there. It's not limited at all. Let's do the same thing here lift, point up, and then down. And the other things I'm looking at too is how does one side compare to the other? You know, we really want to just compare a U to U, um, as well as like some of the observations that I'm able to make and, and see and uh, other the team where we're able to see. Uh, fantastic. We're gonna do a quick uh, flexibility test. Um, we're gonna sit forward in our chair just a little bit. And I'd love for you to just straighten out that left leg, placing it on the ground, keeping your chest up nice and tall, and keeping that left hand on your thigh. You're just gonna slowly lean and tilt to your upper body forward, leading with the chest, no cheating, good range, yeah. And it doesn't look like your hamstrings are too tight at all. They look pretty, uh, pretty mobile. I think so. Yeah, that, that was, that was, I, I can't even go that far. My, <laughs> yeah, no, on my hands are terrible. Uh, bend that left knee for me. Uh, straightening up the right. Same idea. Good tall chest, and let's see if there's any difference. Maybe that right side is a little bit more limited. And no, it's not. Okay, great. Awesome. Good flexibility in that joint there. Um, awesome. I felt it in my hamstring. <laughs> but it wasn't limited. No, that was fantastic. Okay, now uh, we're going to get into a little bit more of the movement assessments, a little more functional, uh, functional in nature. I'll have you stand up for me. You know, I'm going to get a dowel. Um, now, this can be done with a broomstick or if you have like a wooden dowel in your home. Um, Fantastic. I'll give you a quick demo uh, as to what I'm going to be looking for. And again, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, that's fine. We can modify it so we, we, we can still find some of the answers we're looking for. So, uh, in a perfect world, we are going to get... I should probably take my shoes off too. Yeah. In a perfect world... We're going to have a switch locations here. Um, in a perfect world, I'm going to instruct you to stand as comfortably as you can. I want you to feel as though your base of support is equally distributed on either side. For some people, that may be a little more narrow. For some, it may be a little bit wider. For right now, the sake of today, I just want you to stand as comfortably as you can. All right? Uh, when it comes to the dowel and the stick, in a perfect world, we'll be able to bring this right up to beside the ears, okay? And from here, what I'm gonna instruct you to do is take a seat in a chair or just sit back into a squat position. We're gonna sit all the way back. In a perfect world, try to keep the arms beside the ears. Exhale as we stand. I'm going to instruct you to take a deep breath in as we lower. And exhale. All right. I'm going to have you do that a few times for me. I'm going to make a couple notes so you see what's tight. So some of the things I'm looking for is, are your chest muscles tighter? Um, is there wiggling in the knees? Are we caving in as we go through these movements? So that's something that you do. Okay, I'll give that to you. Same idea, I'm going to be looking at you from the front side and the back um, just to see if, if I notice anything from either, either angle. Okay. okay? So you want my arms up? Yeah, arms up. And I'm just going to have you push your hips back. You're going to go into a squat for me. Push your hips back as you bend the knees forward. Awesome. Do that a few more times for me. up the idea that your, do, your feet do cave in a little bit, um, but again, it's not the end of the world, it's something that I would like to know and we'd like to work on a little bit. A little bit of movement on the hip, a little bit of hip hike on uh, the right side when you lower, um, which again, it's not the end of the world, but okay. Now, this is one of my personal favorites. called the timed up and go, 
what I'm going to have you do. Um, all right, so uh, Jennifer, I'm going to have you take a seat on the chair here. And what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to count you down, and when I say go, I'm going to have you stand up as best you can. I'm going to have you walk over to that chair, turn around, come back, and have a seat. This is going to be a time test. Some of the things I'm going to be looking for is number one, how fast you can do it. So go as comfortably as you can, but it is going to be time, so as best you can, consider that. Uh, how do you stand up? What are the same things I'm going to be looking at? Um, how you move, how you walk. So it's a great overall indicator of, again, mobility. So um, I'm going to have you, uh, again, any questions? Am I going around the chair? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so now, um, when you're ready, I'm going to count you down, stand up, walk all the way around the chair, come back and have a seat. And sit down. Okay. okay. And on, are, are you ready? I think so. Okay, great. And uh, let me get my timer out. Pardon me. And uh, I'll count of three, two, one, and go. in about five seconds or so. Uh, anything under 11 seconds is kind of the sweet spot, um, but you stood up independently, you moved with vigor and speed, uh, great job, awesome. Unfortunately, here we don't have stairs, but um, in your home, do you have a lot of stairs in your home? We do. Yeah. Um, any concerns or risks when you're walking up them? Do you, do you ever feel anxious or nervous when you're walking up a set of stairs? No. I mean, only when it's maybe dimly lit. Sure. Sure. But okay. No. Okay. Awesome. Um, I'd love to see, this, so this is going to be, again, more from functional test, but also cardiovascular. Um, we're going to modify it a bit just because I don't have stairs here, but I do have a step. Um, it's going to be right beside the wall, and I'm going to demonstrate that for you right now. Okay. Now, for me personally, what I'm going to have you do to modify it is, um, since you are quite mobile and you have a lot of abilities here, um, we're going to do it slightly different. So it's going to be, you can keep your hand on the wall for a little bit of balance. Okay. It's going to be 10 steps starting with the left leg. Okay. After the 10th, we're going to do 10 stepping up with the right. Um, balance on both. Some of the things I'm going to be looking for again is are your, are your knees caving in, are you buckling? And then at the end there, I'm going to take a, uh, another manual heart rate just to see, because we know when your heart rate is at rest, Obviously, that after a movement like this, does it shoot up? And then I'll wait another minute or so, retest you to see how it comes down, just to see how your recovery is. And that's another big, big part of it as well. So am I going to go fast? Uh, you go at a comfortable pace. Okay. You go at a comfortable pace. It's not going to be timed, um, but I am going to uh, check your heart rate. Um, now, um, we could also time this um, if you'd like, just so we can all track it too. So you brought up a good point. I think I'm going to time it as well. Uh, we'll also track the heart rate. So that way, once we retest you, we'll see if perhaps maybe you did it a little bit faster. So we, going back to your goals, uh, maybe your endurance is improving, your strength and whatnot. So I think that's a great point. Um, we'll track how, how quick you're able to do it, 10 per side, and then we'll do the heart rate right after. Okay. Um, come on over. Do you want me to use my stopwatch? You have it? I don't know. My phone, on my watch. And, uh, so I'm going up with my left and down with my left? Up with your left and down with your left, yeah. Okay. Um, two feet are going to go up top. The wall's there for some support and balance. Right. All right. Anything more? Okay. 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 Okay
And on the count of three, two, one, go for it. All right. Did go up a little bit. Uh, we're going to rest you for a minute and see how it comes down. We went up to about 112. Okay. The rest of the way. Which is to be expected, but again, we, we should have some vigorous exercise. We're going to hang out for a minute. I'm going to retest it. So great. Now it's been about a minute. I'm just going to track the heart rate now to see how well it's coming down. Good recovery, I bet if you track it another minute or so, it'll probably go down to a regular resting. All right, awesome job. Um, I'm gonna have you stand up for me. This is gonna be another practical test. Um, something that we do a lot, we drop our phone. Uh, I would love for you to- I try not to. I try not to, uh, just get a good case on you. Um, I would love for you to, uh, as comfortably as you can, pick up your phone for me. Pick up your phone right from the ground. Not too bad, okay, great. We did that with these, that's awesome. So some of the things I was looking for with that one is, did you need any assistance? Um, how confident with you were you from doing it? You did it relatively quickly. Um, but for some, they may need a wall to get down. It may take them a little bit of time to be confident to go and do it. Um, so great job. Now, are you comfortable getting on the floor? Sure. Yeah? yeah. Um, so we're gonna get into some strength testing now. Um, before we do, uh, just before we get on the ground, um, we're going to be doing uh, sit to stands. So I'm going to have you take a seat on the chair. Um, this is going to be time once again. So I'm going to be counting out how many times you can stand up and sit down in that chair in 60 seconds. Okay? If you need to take a break within those 60 seconds, that's totally fine. Once again, I'm looking at the quality of how you're standing up and sitting down. Um, and again, if within those 60 minutes you have to stop, take a break, go for it again. That's fine with me. There's no pressure at all, okay? okay. I'm just going to get a timer here. Okay. okay, now, once again, I'm gonna count you down, and on the count of three, I'm gonna tell you go, and that's when we'll start. And I'm sitting, standing up and sitting back down. Standing up and sitting back down, that's right. Okay. All righty. Mm -hmm. Any questions? No. Good to go. <laughs> All right, and on three, two, one, go. Go back down.
Uh, great job, great job. You pretty much did a sit to stand, every, one every like one every second and a half plus or minus. So twenty six is fantastic. Uh, now I'm going to get you on the ground and I'm going to get a mat for you. Uh, if you don't have a mat at home, then um, you can put uh, if you have a yoga mat or something like that. Put out a layer of towels just so it's not comfortable or do it on the rug. Um, what we're going to do to start is we're going to go into a plank position. Now, depending on your, how comfortable you feel, you can do this one of a few ways. Number one, we could have done it up against the wall with walking our feet back. So just as a demo, what we could do is having our forearms up against the wall, walking the feet back, and then again, that would be just a good amount. We could also do it on a counter with our arms straight when we're holding that. From everything that I've seen from you today, I feel confident, and as long as you feel confident and comfortable to get on the floor, what we can do is get on the ground. We're going to be on our forearms. We can either keep our knees on the ground, or we can go legs fully straight. Once again, I'm going to time you here um, for as comfortable as long as you can hold it for. Okay? All right. So I'm keeping that tummy nice and tight. And just focusing on your breathing, keeping that tummy nice and tight. One thing that may help is if you squeeze your buttocks nice and tight as well. Just thinking of muscle activation as best as we can. You are doing awesome. I'll stop you at the minute mark, and that's a sign of excellence. Uh, what we can do is, since you're doing a great job, you're going to go as comfortably as you can, just so we can track as we go. And that's 60 seconds there. Right. Great job. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, since we're on the ground, we're going to do a push up. Now, same as with the plank, um, depending on your comfort level, we can do it up against the wall, just walking our feet back. Pulling ourselves down to the wall and pushing up. We can do it on a counter. And if we are to do them on the floor, we can do this one of a few ways. We can do them with the knees bent, knees bent, feet off the ground, all the way down, punching right back up. For me, what I like to look for uh, when it comes to the push up is try to maintain an A pattern through your shoulders rather than a T. So on the way down, I don't want you gliding your, your arms too close to the torso. Um, this is, again, a few things. Good sign of strength, but also uh, less pressure on the shoulder joint. So um, rather than, again, doing a bit of a T, I'd love for you to tuck the elbows down and back into a bit more of an A. What I like to do personally is um, if I see two or three reps in a row where uh, form is compromised, that's when I'll stop you, but I'll still include them, okay? Um, would you like to do them on the floor, or would you like to do them up top? I'll try to do on the floor from sure. my knees, though. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Focus on This is definitely my... We're doing great. Hey, Mom. <laughs> Why not? This is definitely my week. Hey, it would be the first of many. So, on the count of three, two, when you're ready. Down. Up, nice. Good push-up. Oh, 
Okay, here we go, 15. Four days, one more, let's go. Up. All right, nice shot, 15. Yeah. Not too bad at all, great job, great job, 15, strong. Um, if you would be able to walk up. going to be timed and we're going to start with your feet, feet together, feet and legs together. You're going to go hands onto your shoulders, so keeping the eyes open. Okay. You know what? That looks pretty good. I'm going to stop you early. Uh, we're going to move on to the next one. Um, just because I'm confident from everything that I've seen today. Now we can go a little bit more further down the chain. Alrighty, um, let's start with a slight modification. Keeping two feet on the ground, we're just gonna have one foot, feet once again together, but we're gonna have one foot just in the middle of the other there. It's a little more challenging, right? Um, and what I'd like for you to do, same idea, yep, you got it. <laughs> We're going to hold this for about 30 seconds. And some of the things that I'm looking for is um, how often do you have to catch yourself, if you have to tap. So after the second tap of you having to catch yourself is where I'll stop the time unless we get to 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's great. Two pauses on this one. That's great. 30 seconds, no problem. Awesome. Now, get that a little more challenging if you can. Uh, you're doing great now. Um, just make sure you didn't put any uh, Baileys in your coffee this morning. Uh, I want to make sure that you, you can bring your heel to your toe. Right in front there. There you go. Uh, use the chair. The chair is there for you. And Tom has started. Try to focus your gaze on something just so you stay a little more concentrated. You're doing great. But you can tell it's a little more challenging. So awesome job here. That's all right. Uh, so you did great. Uh, just made it. it. That was the only one tap, so that's that's not bad at all. Um, you would be able to do thirty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're gonna do one foot at a time this time. All I would love for you to do is just lift your foot off the ground. It doesn't need to be super high. Just as long as only one foot is in contact with it. Okay. And the chair is there for you should you need it. And on the count of three. Two and then one, go for it. Push it up. Let's see if it's the same with the, uh, with the left leg on the ground. Right leg up in three, two. Sure. 
test off with a cardio assessment. Um, we can do this one of two ways. I do have a, a, a cycle, I have a bicycle here, or we can do marching on the spot. Is there either that you would prefer? Now since you've told me that you do like to cycle, um, there is an option we can go on the bicycle. What we're going to be doing is just a two minute test. Two minute test, I'm going to be checking your heart rate before, uh, halfway through, uh, pardon me, uh, right immediately after the two minute mark, and then um, a minute after that, just to see again how your recovery is. Um, are you comfortable getting on the bicycle for two minutes? Absolutely. Let's do it. Uh, right, for that one, let's go shoes on. Okay. Um, this is the assault bike, so a little more <laughs> rigorous, but um, we'll use just the feet, just the feet. What is an assault bike? Yes, it's just an air bike. First to say, just instead of uh, the gears being your resistance, uh, the faster you pedal, the more resistance that there's going to be. Um, okay, they they suck. Gears. They're very terrible. They're very exhausting. Um, <laughs> they are awful. Awesome. the march because everybody says, you know, like one of the complaints that people mm -hmm. are disappointed with the president. Let's do the march then. Uh, okay. Make sure you do that. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so, just so you feel a little more comfortable, we'll just do the march. Uh, we're going to be marching for a good two minutes. Uh, a good march is just keeping your legs up as high as you can, as you can take them. You can totally use the chair there for a little bit of support, okay? It's gonna be two minutes. If you need to take a break in between that, that's fine with me, okay? Uh, like I said, I'm gonna do a quick heart rate on you now. Just to check where we're at. Great, so that's right around where the resting heart rate is from four, so um, you could just use that. When you're ready, I'm gonna start timing you. We're gonna go for two for two minutes here. Again, marching as best you can. Um, my arm? Uh, arms can be moving too. Um, again, if you need to use the chair for some balance, that's fine too. You can have one hand on the chair with one arm, one arm moving. Um, are you ready? Any questions? I'm ready. Ready to go? All right. And uh, one second, let me just make sure. That the camera is on you. We are good. Okay. And three, two, one. Let's go. Good stuff. Good fast pace to start. <coughs> now we're just going to talk about stuff. We're going to talk about the weather. We're going to talk about how great it is working with Vintage and all the lovely uh, team members we have. Hi, hey, everyone. Keep it up. Uh, <laughs> um, good stuff. Uh, so, yeah. It's nice that uh, lockdown is closed. We can get out and about. No. Just in time for Valentine's Day. That's <laughs> true. Time. That's true. I hadn't thought about it that way. Yeah, I'm glad we had, uh, I'm glad they didn't lock us down for Christmas. Yeah. In January. But we were kind of locked down for yeah, Christmas. Yeah, there, right? there were restrictions, but. Rooting for our uh, Canadians in the Olympics. Oh, the Olympics. uniforms were a big hit. Oh, no, they're great. Lululemon. I mean, Still, uh, we have those back. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. They're great. Just about halfway through. I hear the scarf is the thing. The it, quilted scarf oh, okay. that says Canada. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I have to check that out. I've been trying to avoid Lululemon just because my credit card doesn't uh, <laughs> like what I overindulge there, but I don't want to take you with it. Yeah, we get the soft black too, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's all. 20%. Oh my god, it looks good. Ah, yeah. I'm sure she gave it a better chance. Oh, 
10 seconds, you're doing great. 10 seconds.